The Artisol D16 is a tablet with some really good pros and some awful cons that could be a deal breaker for a lot of artists. In this video, I'm gonna tell you my opinion on this tablet and if you should or should not get it. What's up guys, Lucas here. I'm a concept artist and illustrator working for video games and this channel is all about art and art related content. So if that's something that you like, consider subscribing. So let's start with the unboxing. First, I want to say thank you very much to the guys at Artisol for sending this tablet. I'm super grateful that you guys send products like this for me to review. I was very excited to receive this because, well, first of all, look at the size of this package, it's gigantic. And second of all, I really wanted a display tablet for myself. I have always worked, you know, with a, with an Intuos or other Wacom non-display tablets. And it was about time that I upgraded my setup with a tablet that was actually display. For the ones that don't know what a pen display is, the difference is that tablets with the pen name pen display have already a monitor included or integrated, so you draw directly on the screen. While the regular tablets or the desk tablets, you have to draw in the screen and you, then you see your lines reflected on your monitor. Both of these tablets depend on a computer to be able to function. I was actually never a very, very pro pen display guy until I started using one at work. And I have to say guys, after a year and a half of using a pen display, you cannot draw on a regular tablet. It ruins your skills. You realize how much easier it is in a pen display tablet. The tablet came very nicely protected for anything that could happen to it. And there was absolutely no damage in the contents of the box. The first thing that you would see in the box is the tablet itself. It's a very, very solid tablet. It feels good. It has a nice weight to it. It's definitely not as, as heavy, for example, as for you to not be able to carry it around, but I wouldn't do that so much. The next thing that you would see in the box is your pen. And I have to say, I actually not, I'm actually not a very big fan of this pen. It has not the most appealing design, not the most beautiful materials but it gets, it gets the, the job done, I guess. Next thing you will find inside of your bag is going to be a little pen bag with some extra nibs and a pen nib remover that is always useful. And then comes the stand that it actually was surprisingly light and didn't feel as sturdy as I would expect the stand to be, but more about that later. You will also find a nice pen holder that you attach to the side of your tablet and even though it feels like a little random piece of, of plastic, I have to say it actually works pretty decently. And then comes the glove, which is actually the first glove ever for digital painting that I have ever used that actually feels comfortable. Like, like I could actually use this, this glove on my daily, daily usage. I think that the difference is, the key difference is that this one has a hold or, or a hole for your thumb. And the ones that I usually encounter are ones like, like this one, for example, that when you put it on, it leaves your old the side of your, of your hand free. And it doesn't feel as, I don't know, I just, personal preference but I prefer the other one. Of course you will find your instruction manual, you will also find some AC connector that has some adapters for different regions so that is actually pretty nice. A couple of cables for the AC and also for HDMI connection to your computer so make sure that if you don't have a computer with HDMI connector you will need an adapter. Once the screen protector is removed you will find that the tablet has a very nice anti-glare finish that I appreciate very much because I don't like to have the reflection of lights on top of my screen it really really destroys my my focus so that is something that I appreciate so in general what I would say about after the unboxing is that the tablet itself actually feels very sturdy and very good of very good quality but the accessories not so much with exception of course of the glove that I that I love. Let's get to some of the specifications of this tablet. You will find the Artisol D16 in Amazon Germany for 314 euros, which is actually cheap for a display tablet if you think about it. It has a not very impressive 76% of Adobe RGB, that is the fidelity of the colors, the color reproduction of the screen, which of course for every artist is quite important and 76 is suspiciously low. But for some reason, when I compare the colors of the tablet with the ones from my Dell 
U27, which is actually a very well calibrated monitor, I find that both have very similar values and color reproduction. So it's surprisingly good. The screen doesn't show any dead pixels or any light bleeding, which is marvelous. And of course it comes with Full HD and IPS, which are an obvious requirement for any tablet, any display tablet that you find in the market. If you find something on the market that is not Full HD, do yourself a favor and don't buy it. Full HD is the minimum. The tablet itself comes with seven customizable keys if you want to do that, not that I usually use the express keys of the tablets, and a nice touch ring that is actually different from any any other touch ring that I have seen integrated with, what, with my Intuos or Cintiq, and this is because the touch ring on this tablet actually rotates. The pen itself comes with 2000 levels of pressure, which for the standard of the market right now where pens are usually 8000, it is not that much, it's, but as I have told you before, the thing with pressure levels is that I don't notice a difference. Like, like you can give me, and I have been drawing for digital for more than 10 years, and you can give me a 512 levels of pressure on a tablet and immediately switching to another one that is 8,000. And the difference is so subtle, so subtle that it's not even worth mentioning. The size of the tablet is 16 inches. Also another pro of using a 16 inches screen tablet is that it actually fits your desk. If I would be using, a, I don't know, like a 27, 24 or 22 inches, I would find find myself a little bit cramped in my desk. And I have a, I have a big desk, but having two monitors plus a tablet is a bit too much for a workspace. Let's get to the installation process. As you can imagine, this tablet requires the stand. But free or not free, I have to say, this stand sucks. It feels dangerously fragile, but even if nothing happens to it, the biggest problem is that when you put the tablet against this this stand, you cannot move the, the tablet and the stand both at the same time in a comfortable manner. You have to kind of like reach behind the tablet to be able to grab both at the same time. And it's pretty uncomfortable. So that doesn't work for a person like myself that likes to move the tablet around back and forth when I like to use the mouse or the keyboard. And the second problem is that you cannot put this tablet high enough in the stand because otherwise, it's, otherwise it slides. So again, for someone like me, the likes the, to draw in a tablet that is very, very tall or perpendicular to my eyesight, it is not that comfortable. This is future Lucas saying that past Lucas is an idiot and he didn't know how to use the stand of the artisol. So let's take a look. So just for you to see and realize how much of an idiot I am, this is the way that I was trying to use the 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 stand and here is the right way of using it don't this yeah exactly i was just using it upside down and with this side on the tablet doesn't slide and the better thing it has this this little like surface where voila you can put your tablet so mm -hmm. suck on it Lucas from the past. But as I told you before, this tablet comes with a free stand and you can find way better stands on Amazon for like 40 bucks, so maybe it's not worth complaining about. Then I connected the tablet and that's when the scary part started. And this is something that, you know, you have to be wary about, so so make sure you, you pay attention to this. When I started using the tablet, for some reason the pen started being recognized in the tablet before I could touch the screen. So that would ma that made impossible painting. I will try to, for example, try to paint a stroke, but suddenly it got recognized before, so it started painting it before. It was impossible to select layers or things like this. It kept, kept double clicking all over the place. It was just a nightmare. By then, and because of my failures with previous non-Wacom tablets, I was already, already giving up on this tablet. I was going to say, all right, I, I reinstalled the drivers a couple of times and I said, okay, if it doesn't work, I will just like return this thing and say to the guys that sent, sent it to me, it doesn't work. But fortunately, I found a solution which was something actually pretty stupid and pretty easy to fix, but also not a very nice thing that this tablet came in that state. The problem was that the cables inside of the 
of the pen were loose. So that made that sometimes when I was wobbling or like moving the pen too fast, the, the tablet recognized the movement as a click. So just by, by chance, after, after reinstalling the drivers for a couple of times and not seeing any results, I decided to open the, the, the pen and check it out myself. I just moved the cables, accommodated them in a different way inside, closed the pen again, and now it works like a charm. So again, something very stupid and, and you know, it proves of the, maybe the quality of the pen, it's not the greatest pen ever, but now that it works, it, it just works, alright? So maybe there is no much to complain about, it's just, you know, like quality, quality assurance on, on these things could be could be faulty. The pen holder that I mentioned before is actually really nice and secure. Like you would think that a little piece of, of plastic like that would just not work at all. But honestly, when you put your pen in here, it actually, it actually clicks really nicely. And I have to say that the presentation of this tablet is actually pretty nice. I, I like how it looks, I like how it feels. It looks very smooth, black, uh, minimalist. It doesn't have, you know, all these, these logos everywhere. Just a small artisan logo on the bottom, which is really nice. The only thing that bothers me about this tablet presentation is the cables that go too much out on the side so this is it's kind of a, like an eyesore for me to to look at those cables but i guess if you don't if you don't mind that much those cables then it's not a big problem i just try to forget that they are there and not seeing them and of course the ugly pen that is just ugly as i told you before the screen felt small at the start but once i i started like uh, drawing on it and painting it more, then I got used to the side and I forgot that it was just 16 inches. The parallax, that is the distance between the tip of your pen and the screen, was actually not that big, it was surprising. It was kind of like a middle, middle measure, what you would find in another competition uh, of this brand for the same price range. So after I got used to the tablet, I decided to make a couple of portraits and value studies. I decided to, to make a, a Finch value study of a really, really amazing friend of mine named Astrid Pinella. I'm, I'm gonna put her, her Instagram tag in the screen right now, so be sure to check her out. And if you guys want to see the final painting of this demo, go to my Instagram and check it out. So what are my two biggest cons with this tablet? That deal breakers that I mentioned at the start, that could be, could be the reason why you don't buy this tablet. First off, there is quite a big of a delay on the pen. The difference between where you move your pen and when the line makes or, or draws itself you know, it's it's very small. It's very small, but it's still big, bigger than than other devices that I have tried before, and that makes it feel like I don't know how to explain it, but that makes your drawing feel kind of slow. Like you're all the time dragging the lines a little bit behind. It's a matter of you know, like milliseconds, but it bothers me. And if you are used to other type of devices that don't have this amount of, of lag, you will find yourself like a little bit slow, like trying to, to like, getting out of this weird feeling of your tablet not working at the speed that you're used to. But that problem compared to the main one is nothing, because the main one is how wobbly the lines are. I try to make straight lines, uh, small lines, whatever you, you want to do in here that is line work will be impossible for you to do because it's just terribly, terribly shaky. Every line that you make is going to be like super, super shaky. So if you're an artist that likes to do line art, clean line art, you will not find this tablet useful for you. If you are mostly for painting and, and yeah, painting, you will find that this tablet doesn't have any type of issue for you. Because I'm more of a painting artist than a drawing artist, I find this tablet to be a very big improvement over what I had before, that was an Intuos Pro. So I'll be, from now on, using this tablet as my daily, daily usage tablet here at home, and I find it actually really comfortable. You saw the pressure was good, the feeling was good, size is pretty decent, resolution, the screen is very, very good, so I actually really enjoy this tablet. So again, if you don't mind the little delay that it has, and secondly, the, the wobbly lines, then this is a very good tablet for you. 
If you're still undecided if you should get this tablet or not, let me tell you that this one is right now 340 euros in Amazon, while the rest of the competition, you know, the, the similar brands uh, like XP Pen and, and Huion and other ones that are also entry level display tablets are around the 400 plus euros. So you're going to be paying a little bit more for the other brands. And I haven't tried all these other brands, but I have tried Wacom quite a lot. And I have to tell you, you know, for Wacom, you're paying almost four, five times more than what you pay for this tablet. And you will notice a difference. There is not going to be lag and there is going to be still a wobbly line, but not so much as this one. But you have to think about it. Is that price difference worth just those two things? If you are looking for an entry level pen display, you want to move, make the move from a regular uh, tablet, desk tablet to a pen display, this is the tablet for you. This is the cheapest tablet that you can get out in the market that has actually pretty decent, pretty decent values, pressure level and screen quality. So yeah, if you're looking for entry level, this is a tablet for you. That's it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video till the end. Leave me a like if it was useful. And of course, subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you guys on the next video.